They say a quarterback is only as good as his offensive line. Well, this combo was lethal, breaking records for Alabama the last two seasons. But now they go their separate ways. Tua Tungavailoa was picked fifth overall in the first round last week to the Miami Dolphins. It's the spot pretty much everybody expected Tua to land. And for those who might be critical of picking him this high because of injuries, his accolades speak for themselves. The only thing keeping Tua from being an all-time great in college football was not winning the Heisman Trophy. If you go solely on last season, the rebuild down in South Florida might take a while, with the Dolphins finishing near the bottom of the league in all important categories. But this team has actually shown some promise the last five seasons. They might just need a superstar quarterback to put them over the edge. As for Jedrick Wills, he was taken off the board only five spots after Tua, number 10 overall to the Cleveland Browns. And here's the deal, he could play either left or right tackle. So what did the NFL scouts think about him? Well, they love the ratio of size and speed. He's a big guy, but moves like a tight end in space. The only downside, he's a rookie, and it's gonna take some time to beef up in the NFL. If you follow this league, you know the misery of Browns fans. But dare we say, this team is on the brink of being a playoff contender. Adding Jedrick Wills to a bevy of young offensive stars could be what this team needs to be a serious contender. And for more on Tua Tungavailoa, let's bring in our CBS 42 sports team. You never see Joey Rogers, our sports producer, Simone. Drew, who, who is this guy? <laughs> hey, this is this is the brains behind the operation. None of this goes without Joey, so he deserves to be on the screen at some point. I'm sure our, our viewers that watched our one segment of producer picks we did in February remember me. <laughs> <laughs> and the reasons for that being canceled will go unspoken. We'll just continue with this segment. Yeah. Uh, since we talked about Tua last Monday, it aired on our show, he has since gotten a new number in the NFL. Dan Marino, of course, was retired with the number 13 jersey. That means Tua Drew is going to be wearing number one, and he said it was for the man upstairs, obviously. But there's a lot of fans out there saying, oh, two is number one because he wants to be cocky. He wants to be the number one guy, but that's, come on, that's not the case. No. I mean, if we know anything about Tua, aside from the fact that he's really good at throwing a football, it's that he's a super humble guy. So he would never, he would never look at it from that perspective. But guys, I've never cared more about a jersey number than I did for Tua because the <laughs> Dolphins were like a week late. Every yeah. other team was dropping these numbers. I remember the Panthers with Derek Brown. They dropped it right away. Meanwhile, we're all waiting with bated breath because, like you said, Marino's 13 is retired. And I got to be honest, I think it looks great. Although any number on two, it would look really cool. With that said, Drew, because it was taking so long, we were all waiting and waiting. It makes me wonder what the conversations were that were happening. Because, I mean, it's not like they were – I mean, maybe they were trying to figure out if they were really going to give, um, you know, someone some other number. But – I think it was all about Tua, and it makes me wonder, was there ever a shot that he was going to wear 13? Uh, I know. I doubt it. He respects history too much. I don't think I he would want to take that from Marino. I agree. The big question here is, his number is one. Is he going to be number one in the depth chart when the season starts? Yeah, I, I mean, think so. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on the hip, obviously, but – the thing we have to remember here is Ryan Fitzpatrick is a guy who's beaten out young quarterbacks before. I mean, he's honestly made a living the last 10 years on surprising people and winning the starting job and then surprising people and winning games. But in this case, I guess I'll fall into the trap again. If two is healthy, he's going to start. It's just different. I mean, Rosen, they got for nothing last year. And so they put Fitzpatrick in. Two is their guy. I think he's going to start. There's I, don't, way. I, don't, well, I don't think Josh Rosen strikes fear in very many people's eyes. I mean, you saw what Fitzpatrick did the last couple of years. He was the kind of guy who got really hot, let's be honest. But then when he wasn't hot, it seemed like he was almost a disaster. My dogs are barking. I think I got a UPS package here or something. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. But uh, that's my life in quarantine right now. But uh, you know, looking at who he's got to beat out, okay, Rosen and Fitzpatrick, not very overwhelming. Joey it's not like he's going in there against some very senior veteran laden team who's got this quarterback who may or may not be a, you know a franchise player Tua goes in there they picked him number five for a reason mm -hmm. you know that. I think the big question is it's not going to be who beats out who Tua is obviously the QB of the future the issue is going to be 
do the Dolphins want to work him in slowly? Do they really trust that he's, his hip is healed? Do they, do they have faith that he can, they can throw him into the fire and he can take the hits immediately? I mean, if you're, if you're more concerned with development and growing him as a QB, I guess, you know, you drafted him fifth overall. You trust your doctor. Sure, throw him in there. You know, if you want to build a winning culture and work him into the mix slowly and make sure he's fully recovered, I don't know, maybe you play Fitzpatrick a few games or at least start him for a half. I mean, this team, whether Tua starts or Fitzpatrick starts, is not going to win more than five games next year. Well, that's what, you I, that's that. what I was going to There's going to be a lot of fans who, if they win five games next year, rational or not, they're not going to be happy with five wins. No. I mean, I, in my opinion, they can't get any worse, okay? So <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be an overnight fix. I know that a lot of these fans want it to just – overnight become like this Super Bowl contending team, but it doesn't have to be. So I think what Joey said, if you have him on a snap count, something just to ease him in back into full-time football, is that the smart way to go? Even if you're taking a couple L's early on to let him get used to the speed of the game again and make sure that he's healthy. So that in two, three, four, five seasons, he is the man and he is winning championships for you. I mean, it's not like, it's not like this organization is very rational to begin with. They did trade Minka Fitzpatrick who had an amazing rookie year and they, what they get back from the 18th pick, which they got the fifth best offensive tackle on the board. Um, so, I mean, it's not like this organization has a lot of, uh, um, you know, a good reputation to start off with, Drew. Here's another wrinkle, guys, is one reason you would play too, and maybe you'd rush him back a little bit, is you want to put butts in seats. Yeah. This yeah. year there might not be fans at all. So maybe that that incentive is actually decreased and you think, oh, people aren't going to be at the games anyway. I think if I'm a if I'm a Dolphins fan and I'm rational, I'm thinking long term. This is a You're thinking a two years from now, three years from now. Yeah, when, this core let's is make a not playoff good. run. Five wins right. this year is okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Right. I would actually rather have zero wins and give me the number one pick the next pick. year, and then I can trade it to a quarterback desperate team that takes Trevor Lawrence and they give me a haul back. If I'm the Dolphins, I know I'm not going to do anything this year. Give me as many losses as possible. That's actually why I might even start Rosen. Throw caution to the wind because Fitzpatrick is almost too good to tank. Tank for two again, and then you'll be set up nicely for the future when he is really ready. Well, let's pose call. this question. Go ahead. Let's pose this question. You've, you, I've seen a couple of media pundits out there say that Joe Burrow was the safer move in the draft this year, but Tua Tonga Vailoa, if he's healthy, is going to be the way better long-term pick. Now, let's compare Tua, if he's healthy, to Joe Burrow, what he could be. Let's say 10 years from now, if Tua's healthy and Joe Burrow's healthy 10 years from now, I wouldn't be surprised if Tua Tonga Vailoa's career took off in the next couple of years. It may depend on who's around him, obviously. Their defensive side of the ball may have a lot to do with that as well, but I wouldn't disagree when people say that Tua's long-term status could be even better than Joe Burrow, Simone. I agree with that. And the reason that I do is because I, I'm, I saw this on TV. So I'm not going to say this was organically my comment, but Tua's injuries, all right, the hip thing is like one in a bajillion, right? And then both of his ankle situations, he got surgery for a long-time fix, something he did not have to do, something a quick fix for a long-time reward. And yes, he, you know, he sat out and he didn't play in every single game at Alabama. But the reason he did that was so he could get back quicker, make Alabama a potential national championship winning team. So it's not like he had two ankle injuries that were, had to be surgically repaired necessarily. So I don't think that folks that are saying, oh, he's, you know, injury prone and all that. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think he's in unfortunate circumstances. Yes, I would agree. I would think that. But I see his career truly taking off, Joey. I know that you wouldn't mind seeing that. Well, I mean, I want to see the guy be successful, but, you know, back to, to Brees' point, I don't, I don't know that the Bengals had a choice other than to take Burrow. I mean, how do you pass on a guy that threw point. 60 touchdown passes, oh, but yeah. an undefeated SEC team to the national championship? But I can understand what you would say, hey, Tua, if he wasn't injured, probably would have had the better college career than Burrow. I mean, you got to think if they were healthy – I'm not going to speculate and say they would have beaten LSU in the playoff, but I will say they would have had a much better chance if Tua was healthy and playing in that game. That probably would have been – the spread on that would have been less than seven in LSU's favor. But I, 
I don't think the Bengals really had another choice because you can't pass on someone. This isn't like a Peyton Manning, like Ryan Leaf situation where, you know, you know what you're getting with Peyton Manning, but Ryan Leaf is this amazing arm talent. Like Joe Burrow and Tua both proved it out there. And at the end of the day, you have to go with the guy that's less injury prone. I mean, even if Tua is better, Burrow still probably projects to go to a few Pro Bowls. I don't know if the Bengals are ever going to win a Super Bowl, but. Well, we're also forgetting, Drew, you can chime in here. We're forgetting that Tua's prognostic, prognosis, every single checkup he's had in the last three months has been great. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not going to go out there and do something to his, his foot or his knee or whatever, because it's happened three years in a row now. It's been good news. So you can only assume that if that continues to be good news, we may be looking at two or three years from now where Tua tonga Bailoa. What injury prone? I mean, yeah, that happened back in college, but in, in the pros, he's been fine. It may have been a fluke. We don't know that. Yeah, it's it's impossible to pro- project injuries. And I think of a guy like Steph Curry. I mean, I'm a Timberwolves fan. You guys see this here. One of the reasons they didn't draft him at either five or six, they had two picks before Steph Curry went, is because his ankles were always yeah. injured. And once you get to the pros, and I'm not saying anything about Alabama's training staff. It's probably one of the best – in college football but I think things are just a little bit different when you get to the pros and you're not focused on school you don't have to worry about all that extra stuff that comes with college and you can yeah. just focus on being an athlete I think it's a little bit different so I wouldn't be as worried about it if I'm a Dolphins fan but I think you're right Joe I mean the Bengals had no choice Joe yeah. Burrow just put together the best college season of all time he's not injury prone he's got the moxie he's from Ohio it made too much sense but if two is better in the pros I would not be surprised so let me pose one question before we move on to Wills. If you had to, and obviously none of us are going to bet on this because this isn't even a thing to bet on, but I if you had to put, it, yes, exactly. If you had to put money down that Tua would play at least 75% of his games over the next five years or bet that he wouldn't play at least 75% of his games over the next five years, which way would you lean? I think if you take out this coming season, because there's so many question marks with, first of all, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, you know, the season being played, will fans be in there? Where is the Miami, where's Miami's mindset? I think he absolutely plays more than 75% of his games. This season is kind of a question mark for me still, though. There's one thing we're not talking about. How many times have you heard that two has got to take the advice of throwing the ball away early? Mm-hmm. Or if you see a play is not there, don't try to do something with it. Like he did when he got injured in that game in November. You really think that this guy's not going to take every piece of advice from every pro out there to keep himself injury or keep himself healthy. He's going to learn his lesson. He's not going to be the guy he was when he was 20 years old, trying to make a touchdown play every single time. He's going to be smarter, I think. So I would take the over 75% of his, of his uh, snaps in the next five years solely for the fact that he's going to be a different player up in his mind when it comes to knowing he can't get injured and he's not the guy who has to make every single play on the field. Yeah. I would take the over too. I mean, I think, you know, obviously there's risk, risk there, but I think the guy's going to be fine. Yeah. Can't predict injuries. I would take the over. Yep. So the other, uh, you know, we've seen Tua Tunga Bailoa getting protected very well throughout his two to three years at Alabama. One of those guys was Jedrick Wills, another top 10 pick for Alabama. Interesting here, uh, Jedrick Wills is projected. He was the right tackle at Alabama. He was covering Tua's blind side, obviously, as a left-handed quarterback. The Cleveland Browns want to have him be a left tackle. And who better than Joe Thomas? They're already talking about him being a perfect mentor, Drew to help to uh, to help uh, Jedrick Wills be a starter. You want to talk about first year stars in the NFL, you got to think the Browns would probably need Jedrick Wills to be a starter because they picked him so high. Right. I think it's so fascinating and something that maybe wasn't talked about a ton heading into the draft at least from the outside perspective. I'm sure the Browns had plenty of conversations about it, but what's the difference between going from the right side to the left side? You know, you're still protecting a guy's blind side, but how much different is that? And how do defenses scheme differently maybe to try to attack a rookie? But from what we saw from the guy in college, I mean, he was one of the most common players who spoke to the media. So from what we saw, very cerebral guy, very smart guy, always handled himself extremely well. I'm not an offensive line savant by any means, but from what I saw, he's 
dude's a mauler in the run game and in the pass game. I think he's good in both aspects. Okay, and I listen, I'm not trying to just chime in and be a total hater, but this is what I'm going to say. There is one thing that remains the same from the right side to the left side, and that's that you can't go offsides, all right? This guy, more times than I have ever seen an offensive lineman in a college football that I have watched, has false has been penalized for false start more than anyone I have ever seen. That's now, he teachable. might have – Oh, it's teachable. No, he, yeah, you're right. You're right. But it, probably it's saw it happen twice and you developed that. <laughs> it's an issue. It's an issue. And he would be like the only guy that stood up with everybody on the line. You always see his little ponytail sticking out. And it was like, oh, there's Jedrick Wills again, uh, you know, going a false start. A little bit like, listen, I, I never played offensive line, but hopefully, you whatever his figure, I know you're shocked by that. <laughs> but I'm hoping for his sake that whatever he needs to figure out with timing or communication, that, and I agree, I agree, it's teachable. He has all the physical tools. That's one thing. If I had a bone to pick with him, it would be like, you know, figured out in that regard. Well, apparently, Wills is playing left tackle because they signed a right tackle, Jack Conklin. I don't know anything about the guy, but apparently he's really good. So, yeah. you know, they're, they're setting that line up to, uh, predict, to protect maybe the most unpredictable quarterback in the NFL, uh, Baker Mayfield. Hmm. Um, I don't think that's a stretch to say. So um, you never know what that guy's going to do. So, I mean, they are trying to bolster that line. You know, the Browns have weapons. I, I'm not a firm believer that they have exactly. it all together. And, and I, don't exactly. know that, I don't know that this pick really gets them closer to a playoff spot. But I guess, you know, you, you got to protect your franchise guy. And this is the move they went with. I yeah, well, think it's a great investment. Line. I think they could win yeah, now with it, too. I mean, look at last year. They had the skill position players, and they just couldn't protect Baker. That was their big issue on offense. So I think it's a good pick. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at guys like Nick Chubb and Odell Beckham Jr., they're not worried about their skill guys. They're worried about what was up front. And you've got to go back to the reason why they pick. What do you need at the top of your draft? They need clearly an offensive lineman. Now, it's a 22-year-old who goes into the NFL different than a 29-year-old who's been there for seven years and he's bulked up and he knows the game. Yeah, it is. But the potential is probably what they're seeing there. Probably a lot like the Dolphins. you got to think that Cleveland sees this as a long-term thing, maybe two years from now, three years from now, where if they can keep their components on offense at skill guys and then keep Jedrick Wills, get him better, they could be an offense that could be maybe one of the best in the league. I think the good thing for Browns fans is that because they're drafting an offensive tackle, or yeah, it's not the sexiest pick in the world when it comes to the NFL draft, especially a top 10 pick. If they're drafting an offensive tackle, that, that makes you think that the GM and the coach think that they have their team built. And this is just like the one piece they need to put it all together. So as a Browns fan, you got to be excited about that. I mean, if they're going out there drafting another QB, you know, at the 10th overall pick after drafting Baker Mayfield, I would have some serious concerns about the direction, but the fact that they drafted an offensive tackle, that means that, and honestly, they got the guy that was probably first on everyone's board, but the, uh, the offensive tackle from Georgia was taken first, um, was taken fourth by the, the Giants, but Wills was considered the best prospect on the board at offensive tackle, so I guess as a Browns fan, you got to be excited about that. My dad's a Browns fan. He was excited. Chris Wrinkle will be excited, too. And I know he's watching this right now. So, guys, we'll all just wave to Chris Wrinkle. Who? And we'll end on that note. <laughs>